Welcome to the Thrive Podcast. If you want to thrive in your life and business while keeping God first, you're in the right place. This is the show for leaders who want to leave a legacy of love, encouragement, and generosity. You want to be remembered for the way you positively impacted the lives of others and made a lasting difference. You want God to order your steps. Sometimes you just need a nudge in the right direction to take those steps. The Thrive Podcast will help you take the right steps, overcome obstacles, and equip you for the kind of success that matters to you. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. All right, everyone, come on in, come on in. Welcome to today's Ladies Bible Study. So glad everyone is here. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Father, we just want to say thank you. Oh, God, you are good. You are faithful. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being thank you. Thank you for being consistent in our lives. Oh, God, you are the God of more than enough. Hallelujah. Thank you that we can rejoice in your presence. Thank you that we can just be ourselves in your presence. Thank you that we can walk in victory. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for everyone who is here in the building. I pray that you do something special for them. Oh God, for their push, for their press today in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for those who are tuning in live. I thank you for those who are even catching the replay. And Father, I ask that you do something special for them today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Give God a praise. Woo! Oh, I am excited. I was telling the ladies as I was coming in today, you all, I just have an expectation in my spirit. Does anybody just have a spirit of expectation? Hallelujah. That God is getting ready to do great things. Elder Parker, good to see you on here. Welcome in all the way from Los Angeles, California. So glad you were on here. Yes, yes. You got people saying hello to you. The ladies saying hello to you, Elder Parker. They know you and love you as well. So listen, I'm excited for today. It has been a busy morning. I started the morning off with, of course, prayer and devotion and um, getting started in things that God is doing with Amazon right now. I am so grateful, you all. I will post a link in the chat after this um, processes and everything. But for those of you who don't know, God just blessed my business to go into partnership with Amazon. And I cannot thank God enough. God is a miracle working God. There's just something about when you are in alignment with your divine assignment. And it's so what I tell so many people, you've got to get out of your own way and you got to start before you're ready. And I'm so proud of so many of you in here. You got out of your own way. You started before you were ready. And now you're doing things that some people would only dream of doing. And so don't be afraid to partner with a big fish. That will be my business. That, that'll be my business lesson for you all today. Some of you are have fledgling businesses and maybe one month you make the income, the next month you don't. One month you do, and it's like a roller coaster. It goes like this, ask me how I know. Well, one of the things that can help you is when you partner with a big fish, for example, in my instance, Amazon, what that does is you're partnering with people who are experts in their field, right? You recommend something that you know and love, and I've been telling so many people <clears throat> about something called urethaline A. It's a supplement that you take that helps you with your mitochondrial and your cellular energy and your cells. It's proven by doctors. It is a wonderful benefit because as you age, what you want to be able to do is help to increase your muscle mass. Muscle is what helps you to maintain your youth. A lot of people want to lose weight. And while losing weight is good, you want to be able to maintain to, to maintain muscle, right? And so not only does it do that, but it also gives you great energy. And so I, I shared some with my husband the other day and he felt the different, it was like night and day. And this morning he was like, where's this stuff at? Where's this stuff at? Give me your Amazon link. I'm going to order. And he ordered. And so his is on, on the way, but stuff like, I will always only recommend products that I know and love and use as well. And I believe we have a responsibility as believers to share the good news, right? To share the good news of the gospel, but to also share the good news of, hey, this is what's working in my life. This is what we're taking to help us sleep well and remember things. Um, there's one other called 
PS100. Um, and it is great for helping you to remember things. So if you have a to-do list that's as long as your arm sometimes, like I do, and you have a hard time remembering some stuff sometimes, that helps with memory cognition and brain function. So it's really helpful. And these are proven, oh, I am not a medical doctor, right? Uh, you need all of them. <laughs> Trust me, I have all of them too. Yes. Um, but talk to your medical doctor and they will help get you in alignment with where you should be. Finally, before we go on, I want to let you know that both of my books are on Amazon right now. OMG. So they're in, um, on Amazon. You can order. One is called You Have What It Takes. This is my very first publication. You Have What It Takes. The other is called Love Letters for Leading Ladies. And we are working on a new one coming out. We also have another one called Women of New Life. I know some of you may have gotten that one as well. Um, it is not on Amazon yet, but the one that we're working on right now is called Thriving Through Transitions. Mm. And that book, and praise the Lord, is right, because that book is definitely true to so much of what I've gone through and what I know so many of us have gone through as well. So I want to encourage you to pick those up. Again, the link to the Amazon shop will be in the chat after this stream is over, okay? Uh, but if you're just itching to go there now, you can go to Amazon, type in, uh, um, how do they have it? Type in Giovanna. No, type in Dr. Giovanna Lady J. Ellison, and it should let you, um, it should take you to my store. All right, so let's get into it. Today's lesson is how to heal from heartbreak. Mm. Everybody just take a deep breath. How to heal from heartbreak. Somebody Google for me that scripture that says, um, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Tell me what that scripture is, but that's where I want to spend today. Um, <clears throat> the Bible says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, to those who um, are contrite in spirit. A man's infirmity he can bear, but a wounded spirit, the Bible says, a wounded spirit who can bear. And somebody watching today, even somebody in the house, you have dealt with your share of heartbreak. What scripture is it? Psalm 34 and 19 and 18. Thank you. Psalm 34 and 18. Somebody type it in the chat in here for me as well. What does it say? That the Lord is what? He is close to the brokenhearted. Thank you. He's close to you right now. If you are dealing with any level of heartbreak and listen, if you have lived any number of years on this planet earth, you have dealt with your share of heartbreak. I have both hands up and a foot. And both at both feet, if I can, right? <laughs> we have been through it. And it's so easy to wear a mask. It's so easy to walk around acting like everything is okay when on the inside there's a silent tsunami or tornado or hurricane going on. Speaking of the hurricane, if you have been displaced or if you have family members that are going through it right now, please know that we are lifting you up. And not just lifting you up, but are also doing what we can as a church body to help um, the lives of those be restored. And that's another thing. Listen, be careful what you intake, just the, the material. One of the things my mama always taught my sister and I was that the best things in life are not things. And it's true. The best things in life are, is not your stuff. I know we love our ladies. We love our Louis Vuitton. Trust me, I do too. We love this. We love that. I do too. But at the end of the day, right, what happens if a hurricane comes through and washes it all away, right? You want to be able to have the wisdom to say, all right, I'm going to use wisdom in what I buy and how I buy it and when I buy it. I've gotten off course off, off track with the heartbreak with there, but I just wanted to say that really quickly because the best things in life are not things, right? It's the people at the end of our lives. Um, uh, there's a series on Netflix. Tell me if anybody else is watching it. It's called The Resident. It's a really great show about um, people that are going through illnesses and it follows the hospital staff and nurses and everything like that. And you always see when somebody is on their deathbed, they're never asking, can you bring me my Mercedes? Can you please look in the closet and bring me that pair of, of, of St. 
uh, John's or whatever designer it is. No, they're not doing that. They're saying, where's my baby? I want my family, right? So cultivate these relationships. But it's hard to cultivate relationships when you're dealing with heartbreak. And if you're dealing with heartbreak right now, it may seem like it'll never end. You may be in a place right now where you feel like, will I ever get through this? Will there ever be a brighter day? And I'm here to tell you that although you may feel like there won't be a morning, that there won't be the sun won't shine again, I'm here to tell you that you will heal and that the sun will shine again. So uh, what was that scripture? Psalms what? Psalm 34. I've got all my Bible scholars in here, everybody helping me today. But he is close to you. He is close to the brokenhearted. So step one in healing from heartbreak is to acknowledge your pain. It's important that you allow yourself to feel the full range of emotion that comes with heartbreak. Now, I'm not just talking about a relationship between a man and a woman. I'm also talking about you sister girls out there. Maybe you have a girlfriend, uh, one of your best friends. Maybe it was somebody that you trusted. Maybe the relationship just isn't the same. And it can be for all kinds of reasons. Maybe life has changed. Somebody moved away. Somebody got married. Somebody went through something, right? We all have situations, but many times those situations can lead to feelings of sadness, feelings of anger even, and feelings of confusion. So acknowledge the pain. That's number one. Number two is for some of you, in order to help you heal from heartbreak, you need to cut off contact. Everybody say cut off contact. Mm -hmm. Temporarily cutting off contact with somebody who has hurt you can help you focus on yourself and really begin the healing process, right? That includes avoiding social media, stalking them. What are, what are they up to? Seeing their pictures here and there, and even some of their mutual friends, right? So sometimes you have to make a what? Necessary ending. A necessary, I, I could say just an ending, but no, some endings are necessary. Woo! You want to be sweet. You want to do the right thing. You want to do all that. And I get that. I understand that. But there's some days you got to put your foot down and say, I care more about my mental health and about pleasing God than I do this particular situation. Oh my. It's easier said than done. But I encourage you to make the necessary ending if you have to. Mm. We're at that time of year where people are re beginning to reevaluate. Mm. And I've been keeping a running list of all the miracles God has done every single month this, this year. I, I have just, I, I made it my intention to just remember everything God has done. And I may, and, and so I have a journal separated for it. And I, 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 I have months, okay, January, February. So even now we're in October, or depending on when you're listening to this, I like to go back and think about the goodness of the Lord back in January. <laughs> I like to think about what he did in February. I like to remember how he brought me out in March, right? When we just think about it and we're living in a time where the world is moving so fast. Anybody else we feel like the world is moving so fast, but Lord, slow my heart down long enough so that I can remember, hallelujah, all that you have done for me. Woo! And I'm not just writing down everything that he's done, but I'm also writing down the kind of mental space I was in at the time. Because your reflection is the reward. Your reflection is the reward. Because when you look back at some of that stuff, you say to yourself, oh, we're not doing that again next year. Oh, I didn't have to go to that. I did that out of pressure. Or I said yes because I felt pressured to. I didn't really want to do that. Or I did want to do that. And so when you reflect, you can become even more grounded on what you uh, are, are going to be in the following year, what you're really going to say yes to. Yeah. So take time to reflect and really think about what you are doing, where you're going. So healing from a broken heart, you got to take care of yourself. Get out of that bed. I know you want to curl yourself up into a ball, 
I know you just want to uh, sit on the couch, eat ice cream and watch Netflix all day or whatever it is that you do. But listen, you got to prioritize your self-care and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Get out the house, get your vitamin D3, get your K2, use those together, get your exercise. Talk to someone. Preferably talk to someone who is non-biased. Talk to someone who is non-biased. What does that mean? That means they don't have that person on a pedestal like you do. They see them on the exact same level. (laughs) Sometimes you need an outside opinion to help you make sense of the chaos of what you're going through. And when you get that outside opinion, sometimes you'll say to yourself, wow, it really isn't that bad. That's really not that bad. Or sometimes it'll help validate the craziness that you're going through. Mm hmm. So find support. Surround yourself with support. It can help make a difficult time even better. If you're dealing with heartbreak, be kind to yourself. Practice self-compassion. Be gentle and forgiving with yourself. Avoid self-blame. Ooh, now this is a big one. You would be having a good day and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the enemy comes and tries to tell you it was all your fault. And that you should have cut and you could have and you should have and all of these things going on. Listen, the Bible says the devil comes to do what? Steal, kill and what? But the Bible also says there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So if he's not condemning you, stop condemning yourself. If he's not condemning you, stop condemning yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. The devil wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal the very victory that you're on the verge of receiving. But if you keep thinking about and all the condemnation and beating yourself up with guilt trip after guilt trip after guilt trip, then it's very difficult to move forward. How can you lift your hands in a straight jacket? Come on, somebody in the house on a Thursday. How can you give God the victory? Woo, way down with the burdens of the world. How can you praise him? Like you got to set. Listen, what does Vicki Winans say? She said, set yourself loose. I love a song by Dorinda Clark Cole. She says, I'm coming out with my hands up. Woo. And some of you need to come out with your hands up. I don't feel like it, but I'm putting my hands up. I've been hurt, but I'm putting my hands up. Oh my God, I choose to believe you nevertheless. Nevertheless, everybody just say nevertheless. My heart has been broken, but nevertheless, I'm coming out with my hands up. I've been lied on, but nevertheless, I'm coming out with my hands up. Ooh, with the victory, with the victory, with the victory. Hallelujah. So take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's also important that um, you find good outlets for expressing your emotions, such as journaling or talking to someone you trust. Now, let me say this. Yeah, uh, I'm going to read these comments later. They're so small to see from this distance, but I will I will get to them. I promise you. Um, I will say this. Um, some of you are dealing with a heartbreak in such a way where you just want to send that person a text and it may be an angry text or it could be uh, a, you saying something that you may regret a little bit later. I want to give you a strategy. Instead of texting it, I want you to get a piece of paper and write it instead. It doesn't mean you have to send it, but what that's going to help you do is to clear out some of that clutter, that emotional heart clutter that's going on on the inside. Because once your words are spoken, guess what? Ooh, they're like feathers. Try getting all the feathers that you released after the wind has come and blown them all away, right? And so let's be careful with our words in this time as well. Then finally, the last one I want to leave with you is understand that healing is a gradual process without a fixed timeline. It's going to look different for everybody. Your heartbreak 
is not my heartbreak. Somebody else's heartbreak is not your heartbreak. But what we can do is we can empathize with one another. We can put our arms around one another and we can let them know that we're there. Sometimes when you're dealing with someone who's experiencing heartbreak, it isn't about you doing a whole lot of this. Sometimes it's simply coming up, standing beside them or sitting beside them and just grieving with them. Just being there can make all the difference in the world. So be patient and celebrate small victories along the way, knowing that resilience will eventually lead to recovery. So here's what I want you to keep in mind. The Lord is close to you. He's close to the brokenhearted. He promised to never leave you. He promised to never forsake you. You're going to get through this. I see you crying right now. I see those tears. And God bottles up every single one. Hallelujah. And he promised to be with you. He promised to be with you. Sharon, he promised to be with you in grief. Hallelujah. He promised to be with you in sickness. He is there, Elder Parker. He is there in your darkness. He is there in your weakness. He is there. Hallelujah. So hold on to God's unchanging hand, no matter what heartbreak you're dealing with. And know that the present sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Woo! Hallelujah. With the glory. There's glory coming after this. Woo! There's glory coming after this. You've been through it. Hallelujah. But glory is coming. You hang in there. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Hallelujah. And God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, that's wonderful. Elder Parker said he just got his urethaline A. Fantastic. I know pastor's going to be happy for that as well. You all are fast action takers on here. I love it. Listen, thank you all so much for joining me. Listen, these, look, can I just testify? I, I, I got to tell you, I, I have been telling the ladies here in Bible study for so long about the importance of starting before you're ready and just getting out of your own way. You all that are watching online, if you could see the setup in here, you would probably be so encouraged because it would give you hope and inspiration in knowing that you can do anything. You put your mind to that God is aligning you with. All I have, all I'm coming to you with is a little $30 tripod that I bought on Amazon, of course, and my phone and a little $20 lapel microphone, less than a hundred dollar investment. And now 21,000 of you are subscribed to this channel and different ones of you view from time to time. And I say that to say this, get out of your own way and let God be God and watch him do a remarkable thing in your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for those who are watching. I thank you for the ladies that are even here. And God, I ask that you would comfort the brokenhearted, even the men that are watching. I thank, I thank you for them, Father. I thank you for their leadership. And Father, I ask that you would comfort the brokenhearted, that anyone who's dealing with a broken heart, whether it be from a relationship, whether it be from a disappointment, whether it be from an unmet expectation, whatever it may be, God, I pray that you would heal that place of pain, hallelujah, and replace it with your overwhelming joy, hallelujah. Let them experience a joy that can only come from you, even in the midst of pain. But while they're in the messy middle, while they're in this place of pain, God, I pray that you would carry them, hallelujah. Carry them on your strength and in your love, God. Let them feel your grace and your power like never before. We thank you for this now in Jesus' mighty name. And it is so, amen. And amen. Come on, if you believe that prayer, clap your hands, give God a praise. Hallelujah. I love you all so much. 
Thank you for joining me. Share this uh, live with someone else who you feel needs it and who is going through a period of brokenness. I love you all and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone. It's your time. Are you a coach, entrepreneur, or leader? Are you someone who wants to keep God first in your business? Well then, it's your time to shine. Join the exclusive mastermind of world-class leaders inside Thrive, led by Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Get ready to clarify your purpose, amplify your strengths, and thrive financially from what you already know. Sign up today at Javana.com. That's J-E-V-O-N-N-A-H dot com.